Mollusks are one of the most diverse animal factions in the entire game, with the second highest number of builds to choose from after insects. Despite this, most mollusks are low-tier garbage due to their lack of good defenses and slow speed. Slugs are usually thought of as one of these awful builds, however, there are some slugs which can be viable. Today, we will discuss the new branch, one of the more interesting mollusks. Also, let me clarify one point I have made clear numerous times in the past. This is an extremely diverse faction, and their strategies for survival can vary wildly, with some tactics being garbage and others decent. For the purposes of this video, we will only be focusing on Venomous new de Branch, since most of the other builds which didn't go for this strategy are quite useless, although do let me know if I missed anything. First, we'll discuss their base stats in terms of damage. The new de Branch doesn't really have any useful offensive weapons, other than the basic tongue like Radula shared by most mollusks. The new de Branch's Radula is used primarily for slicing subdued prey into pieces small enough for ingestion though, and not as weaponry against enemy players, so overall, the new de Branch's damage is quite low. In terms of defense, new de Branch have soft bodies which provide abysmal defense against attacks and they also didn't spend XP on creating their own toxins. Instead, these builds acquire their venomous defenses from their prey. Cnidarians like jellyfish, hydroids and anemones are generally decent builds, which is almost exclusively due to their stinging nematocysts, which are easy to use and incredibly versatile for both offensive purposes like catching and paralyzing prey and for self-defense. However, some players like New De Branch have discovered that if Ignidarian's nematocysts prove ineffective, they are defenseless against attacks given their low mobility, soft bodies and generally obvious coloration. Thus, New De Branch will attack and consume Ignidarians like anemones and jellyfish because, in addition to being one of their primary sources of XP, they possess nematocysts which the new die branch can weaponize to increase its defense. By stealing venom instead of creating it, this build can conserve the XP which would otherwise be needed to create toxins, which is certainly a good advantage. The nematocysts also give them a defense stat similar to that of anemones and jellyfish when fully armed, which is quite good. However, the problem with this strategy is that if the player is unable to find a Gnidarian player to steal nematocysts from, they are extremely vulnerable since their soft bodies have pitifully low defense, and so without nematocysts as protection, nudibranchs are basically sitting ducks. Another flaw of the nudibranch build is their ridiculously low mobility. The sea slugs I am discussing in this video didn't spend XP on evolving traits which would allow them to swim in the water column, constraining them to the sea floor. They also adopted the same movement set as other builds in their faction like snails, by using a powerful foot. The strategy can help the player save energy, however, it also drastically reduces the user's movement speed, which is not a good trade-off in my opinion. Also, due to their reliance on nematocysts stolen from their prey, nudibranchs don't have good matchups against builds with Gnidarian venom resistance such as sea turtles. The nudibranch also has pathetic stealth. In order to warn enemies of their potent toxins and conserve their venom, nudibranchs went for bright coloration, which is one of the most common tactics employed by venomous builds in the game, and can be quite effective since the large number of players which use this tactic leads to most predators having bad experiences with bright coloration, and thus their resolve is lowered when they see similar patterns like in the new de branch, which prevents them from needlessly spending precious venom. However, the problem with this strategy is that their stealth is basically non-existent, making it almost impossible to hide from other players, which becomes highly problematic when encountered by a venom-resistant build. Overall, while the new de Branch builds discussed in this video do have some viable strategies for survival, like potent stolen venom and warning coloration, their ridiculously low mobility and stealth, as well as the low defense of their soft bodies and thus high vulnerability before they can acquire the toxins, lands them a spot in C tier. Their strategy, while effective in the right conditions, is just too unreliable in most circumstances, so I cannot find any reason to rank them higher. One final note, other new de Branch that I am aware of are undoubtedly our terror below considering their even greater vulnerability to enemy attacks. Comment down below what you would like to see on the channel next. Hit that like button with a new de branch and subscribe to my channel. Share this video with your snail friends on social media. Thanks for watching and just to let you know there is a species of sea slug which can level up through photosynthesis.